Good morning, everybody. I hope you're going to be joining me for the watch along a little bit later on, but we're coming here with a little bit of a rumour mill episode. Let me just take a seat. How are we all doing? This morning, um, all right day, quite overcast. I thought I'd do a little bit of a of a, of a pre-recorded short one there to just get into it. But guys, if you want some Patreon content, it is available over there. Uh, links in the description below. You can also become a channel member and we've got some little icons that I've, uh, I've put on the membership this morning, which I'm sure a few of you will enjoy. It's when you've been a member for a month or two months, you get a certain icon. So it's quite funny and we'll, we'll elaborate on that a little bit later on. But this morning, I've been thinking about the Leeds United squad depth. Let me just reiterate and move, I should say this, and reiterate certain things. But yeah, so Leeds obviously need squad depth. We all know that. Now, the rumours this morning are, you know, obviously we're focusing on the game a little bit. Leeds are threadbare at centre-back. We all know that. Really, really threadbare at centre-back, which looks like we need, to, we need to speak about in the preview yesterday, but it looks like Ethan Ampadu is going to be going centre-back, which I'm a little bit wary of. I think that's definitely our weak spot today. I'd like to see Ethan, obviously, in central midfield, as all Leeds United fans would like to see, because that is his position. And listen, for centre-back, for Spezia, Venezia... And Sheffield United, he, I think he's better in defensive midfield, put it that way. And, um, you know, I think that is something that you're going to get a Cardiff side trying to exploit when it comes to just balls into the box. Leeds haven't been great at defending set pieces anyway. And just that reduced height, I think it is about five foot nine from a centre-back. It's not going to be ideal. But he's got me thinking this morning with the West Ham interest, which seems to be developing a hell of a lot regarding Willie Neon, so obviously we've seen a lot of our wingers being linked here, there and everywhere. I don't think we're going to see many of them, touch wood, which I am, leaving the club this summer. Um, sorry, this January, I do think there's going to be a lot of movement this summer, to be quite honest with you, but one name that has come to mind, um, I was watching a few highlights yesterday, um, I'm lucky enough to have a Y Scout account, and I'm always just doing a little bit of a delve, a little bit of a search into potential new players that Leeds can go and get. And there's one that sticks out and one that stuck out for a while. If Willie Nyonso would leave, that I was going to bring to the party. And it is Rack Saki. But this guy is unbelievable. Um, a top, top player. Was on low at Charlton. Did really, really well there. Uh, was barely injured, as I, as I keep going on about, Was as a, which equals him being dependable and reliable. I absolutely love how he plays. He's direct. He's energetic. He's fast. Agile. All the lovely words that we can, you know, um, put toward and put next to a winger. All the things that you do want. And yeah, as I mentioned previously, the key thing for me is he's direct. And I love that. I absolutely love that. He can go left. He can go right. He can play on the right. He can play on the left. Versatile across that front four. I mentioned Yasser Espria not long ago in terms of that cam spot. But... Raksaki literally can play anywhere across that three and behind the striker. And if we are to lose Willy Nyonto, he is the perfect replacement. Not right-footed, so he can cut in on that right, off that right-hand side, I should say, onto his left eye in Robin style, Leroy Sade style. And he is he, he really, really would be an unbelievable addition. Now, the politics of the move are interesting because... He's not played for a while. I think he's had he's picked up a few injuries whilst he's at Charlton, but Roy just doesn't fancy him. Obviously, they have a, you know, they have one of the, in my opinion, one of the most exciting players in Raksaki's position at the minute in Michael Elise. But there has been a lot of talk about Michael Elise potentially moving on this January and of course this summer. But this January is going to be teams going to have to stump up 50, 60, maybe close to 80 million from what you've heard on the airwaves, for Michael Lise. So, right now, you're looking at a position where Leeds can definitely improve if they do lose Willie Nyonso. There is an argument that Raksaki would literally be a better fit for Leeds United right now than Willie Nyonso. You get him on a loan, and if we got to the Premier League, there's potential. It'll probably be a Ben White saga because we get a player on loan from the Premier League. He'd probably do well at Leeds, <laughs> in my opinion. And we'd potentially get to the Premier League and then you'd have a Brighton scenario with Ben White where Palace are asking a lot for someone like Raksaki. But 
It just got me thinking this morning because, in my opinion, there is a real potential that Leeds do lose Willie Nyonso this January window. I didn't think of it, of it really at the start in terms of Everton, in terms of in, in terms of a few other uh, Serie A clubs who probably wouldn't be able to stump up that fee. But when you're looking at West Ham, who don't really have those problems but have issues when it comes to Ben Rama being sold, which they're looking at doing. And obviously, Lucas Paquette's been out of the side for a period of time. That really nullifies some creativity for David Moyes' side. And they have the financial means to go about it and purchase a player, especially from the championship, probably for around about 20, 25 mil. That's not going to be an issue for West Ham United. So Leeds need a contingency plan. Leeds need a shortlist. Leeds need at least one or two, maybe even three options where we can go out there and act as soon as willing old so is sold. Now, we have three loan spots available, which is fantastic. You know, obviously with Jed Spence leaving, it does give us the opportunity to have another loan spot. There's been a lot of rumours about centre-backs, right-backs, left-backs. But overall, Raksaki at Crystal Palace, not getting enough game time, would be a lovely, lovely little replacement in the short term for someone like Willie Nelson. Wouldn't have to break the bank. You know, there's a lot of Leeds fans who would have the argument that Leeds don't need anyone to replace Willie Nelson because we have enough in the offensive outlet. You know, you look at players like Jaden Anthony um, to come in and, 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 and you know, replicate what Nelson does in terms of impact. However, if you are to go out there and get a short-term option, this guy is, I think the numbers that he would rack up would be nothing short of, of impeccable, really. So, Raksaki, check him out on YouTube, everybody. Check him out on, on anything you can do, really. Formerly of Charlton, did really, really well at Charlton. And I do think Palace still sees him as an option. I think the Michael Lee says definitely something, the thing is definitely something to keep an eye on. And that's why I think right now, even when it comes to William Young, so we're going to have to keep an eye on what's going on, really, because... Ben Rama hasn't been sold yet, but I think as soon as Ben Rama is sold, that's when the pieces are going to start moving. The jigsaw is going to be fit together, and that's when Leeds really, really need to have a few options to go at. Josh Doig has moved, uh, what well, looks like he's on the move right now to Marseille. Uh, it's going to be difficult for Leeds to compete. I mean, Rangers, us, and we didn't even know Marseille were available there as, as an option until the other day. Um, obviously, uh, Laquipe have, 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 have reported that this morning and uh, last night. So it's going to be difficult for Leeds. I mean, I mean, you can't really compete with Marseille, probably arguably the biggest club in France in terms of fan base and and and, and, and spread. But, you know, I, I still think it's PSG, but still Marseille are up there when it comes to their European impacts over the, the last sort of 30, 40 years. Massive fan base. So, yeah. We're not going to be able to compete with that, unfortunately. It'd be difficult for us to compete with that in the Premier League as well, as we saw with um, Unai not long ago. So, yeah, left back. Unfortunately, Josh Doigan, as Graham Bailey came on the show and said earlier on, it was going to be difficult for Leeds to get that one done. Really, really difficult with the clubs that were in for him and the fee that was quoted. I think Marseille are going to end up paying add-ons and instalments, which is going to far sort of outweigh the five million muted fee that we were speaking about earlier on. And Luke Thomas has returned to um, Leicester City from Sheffield United, a lack of game time. Yeah, an option for Leeds there. I know we're interested in him in the summer. It'll be fascinating to see how that one develops. Um, obviously, the left-back option there. I mean, he chose Sheffield United, but Leeds were heavily in for him. Heavily, heavily in for him. And people might might say, you know, he's not good enough, this, that, and the other. And it will be interesting to see if Leicester would even loan him out. So it was obviously been a division rival. But... That is another option there. Leeds are in talks with Thomas, they're in talks with Leicester. So evidently the talks got to a certain point where Leeds thought uh, a transactional fee would work in their favour. It didn't happen. He went to Sheffield United, but could Leeds explore that option yet again? It's going to be a fascinating end to the window, everybody. And, and, and what I will say is I think it is going to start moving um, as soon as other players start moving in the Premier League. I.e. say Ben Rama, potentially Michael Alise, when we're talking about Raksai, Raksaki, I should say. Um, yeah, fascinating stuff. But guys, make sure you tune in to One Leeds HQ. We're going to be here for your watch along. Head on over to the members uh, section as well if you want some bonus content there. The Patreon will be getting a video today as well, which won't be uploaded on the channel. Guys, as always, it's been an absolute pleasure. Make sure you stay in tune with One Leeds. And um, yeah, just like to say a massive thank you this week for the 30,000 subscribers. I am going to go with a 3 1 win today for Leeds United. It's an absolute must win. Get your score predictions in the section below. I'll see you in a bit. Cheers.